Shemai, and welcome to the Wales Arts Review uh, Digithon. I hope you're all enjoying it, and you're all enjoying it from home. Um, uh, given the current situation, I thought I'd read a couple of pieces from a film poem that I wrote to mark the 70th anniversary of the NHS um, to provide all people. Uh, and this first piece is from the very start. It's in the voice of Howell, who is um, a porter who is watching the dawn from the third floor of uh, Neville Hall Hospital in Abergavenny. Here's the thing. How exactly would you say does an idea begin? Where does it all start? In one woman's brain, one man's heart? It doesn't seem likely, does it? I mean, all of us are fuelled by the thoughts of others, by what we've read, gleaned or seen. I mean, take all this. Healthcare. Medicine. It didn't just rise from nowhere, did it? Someone somewhere, I always think, back across the millennia must have been the first to lay a hand on the wound of a stranger. In a cave, maybe, ice at its mouth, a fire beside, or perhaps later in a hut or a shelter, wherever, whenever it was, someone must have been the first to offer comfort beyond their tribe, not because they had to or should, but because they could. Someone else again would have seen that, watched, learned how to do the same, what staunched the blood, eased the pain, and so it must have begun within us. Not so much an idea as an offering. A caring chain of practice and knowledge, a refusal as a species to just lie down and take it. But rather, through attention, intelligence, care, foster a belief in our agency in life. Our ability to pit our empathy and wit against sickness, disease and death, the trials of the body and the brain, to say when our health goes south, no, not this. This next piece is in the voice of a nurse, um, a newly qualified nurse called Valeria. And um, I wanted to read this because it's full of things that uh, nurses uh, said to me uh, when I was doing my research for this. But also by way, I suppose, of saying dear Galon to all of the NHS staff at the moment uh, who are doing so much for all of us. I'd been a fully qualified nurse for about a month by then, so yeah, maybe I'd been lucky. It had been hard, the long shifts, the new responsibility, but I'd held it together. Being assigned to a bereaved family, though, staying with them all through the night into the day, it was that which first broke me. I know we're trained not to get too bonded, but how can't you? Seeing whole lives, memories spreading out from that room, so much love in distress. And yeah, I guess that's something I'd never really appreciated about the NHS. When you work in it, day in, day out, you come to see it as a vessel of sorts, a vessel of all this love. In the relatives' concern, their care, joy, and yes, their grief as well. You start to really see what people mean to each other. Who we are, and how our care can keep them together. That's what I've come to learn. That this huge machine, this system, bigger than any other, is still, well, so human. So yeah, you do get attached, of course you do. Sometimes I'll even phone in when I'm off, just to see how someone's doing, or, and this is the worst, I'll lie in bed after a 12-hour shift, still thinking about them. Did I change that drip? Do such and such right? Because you're always so rushed, aren't you? All the time. And I guess that's my greatest fear, to get something wrong, not because I didn't know what to do or made a bad choice, but because I was just too tired, or didn't have the time to give proper care. It goes the other way too, though. I mean, sometimes after a really good day, I'll get home and as I'm making my dinner, I'll look at my hands, not quite believing what over the last few hours they've done. How many people they've washed, treated, comforted. And what that might mean as well to the people for whom those patients aren't patients at all. 
but rather a mother, a brother, a daughter, a son. And I'll finish with a new poem. It's so new, I haven't printed it out yet, as you can see. So I'm going to read it off the computer. And I guess, I don't know, why did I want to read this? Um, because hopefully it's about what can uh, come after the hard times. Uh, it's about resilience. And it's about one of the things I think that as humans we can do so well, which is to find the good and the light in the darkness, but also to make sense of things, to make patterns um, in such a way that hopefully things can improve, hopefully, for the people after us. It's called April. And then, just when it felt as if the winter would never end, that last day in April, when we walked the river again, the flood abated, and our youngest asleep in the pram, while you and her sister went on ahead to make symbols and shapes from the debris. Circles of leaves and twigs, winged angels from feathers and sticks. I watched from a distance on a bench, rocking the pram with my foot as the sun discovered its warmth on my back. Everywhere between us lay the marks of high water, like looted bodies after battle. Long hummocks of broken trees, branches and reeds. Everything that is broken and gathered and left when a river breaks its banks. I watched the year's young light catching the water as you and our daughter searched among it all to make and lay your shapes on the stones of the shore. May we always, my love, however wild and deep the flood, make such patterns from the aftermath. Dear Chumbar, stay safe everyone and stay at home. Hoi